I'm always on the lookout for distros that I can take a look at. And sometimes when they're really weird distros, I will put them in the series that are, is more for that kind of thing. Other times I try to look at them in a more serious way. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be taking a look at a new distro called Nitrix. Now, this has been around for quite a long time, but it's new to me. So I thought I'd take a look at it. Now, a couple things you should know. Nitrix is based on Debian and it uses the Calamari's installer. So we'll pretty much see an installation like all the others. And it has its own desktop environment that's based off from KDE Plasma. So it'll be really interesting to see what this is all about because they go through and do quite a bit of stuff with something called Maui Kit. And Maui Kit is basically like a, a development platform slash design library slash something else uh, that allows developers to design and code applications that are very good looking and highly versatile. So it'll be interesting to see how they have utilized Maui Kit to make an interesting looking desktop environment. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's go ahead and jump into Nitrix. So we're going to be booting this into a virtual machine. So we're going to go ahead and hit this to get to the live environment. It's always good when you see a text that says failed doing something uh, or error. So that'll be interesting to see if that gets past that, which it appears like it's going to. That's probably because this is a VM, I'm assuming. So we're going to just go ahead and just assume that it's not uh, broken. So it looks like it's coming up. Let's go ahead and see if we can op op open up a terminal here. So this is the terminal. And I think we're going to go through and be able to use XRander here to change the display resolution. And we are, which is good. Um, well, at least we did for a second. It did not stay. And then it goes right back to that. Okay, so that's, uh, let's go ahead and search for displays then. Okay, we get nothing here. Okay, let's go ahead and close this. And uh, where did all the applications go? Interesting. All right. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, let's search for display here. And uh, okay, so it just highlights it. It doesn't actually bring it to the top. That's okay. We'll just choose 1920 by 1080 from this list. We can find it. It's at the top, of course. And hit apply. And it didn't stay. Okay. I'm assuming that this is, has a problem because of a virtual machine error. So we're just going to. We'll just assume that it's a virtual machine thing and that in normal situations you wouldn't have this problem. So let's just go ahead and uh, change the display driver and see if that will work. Okay, so we just I changed the graphics drivers in VirtualBox and we get full screen. So we're winning. And so I'm, I was right when I said that the problems I was having before were caused by the virtual machine. So let's go ahead and open up the installer here. And it comes full screen, which is an interesting choice. Now, this is supposedly the Calamari's installer, but this doesn't look like anything like the Calamari's installer I've ever seen. It's definitely different. So uh, let's go ahead and hit language here and hit American English and then next. And then we'll choose the region, which would be scrolling hardly ever works well in a virtual machine. And there's no, there's no search box. Oh, here we go. A few moments later. At this point, I'm just going to choose one. You know, at this point, I think I'd rather have the map back that I always bitch about the map. This is kind of not a great experience. I can see why somebody in the comments when I said I prefer to drop down, why they said it was a bad idea. Because if you have to scroll through all of them, I can see why that'd be a bad idea. You, you should have multiple options here. Um, also, this shit is not in alphabetical order. <laughs> like, like, okay, why isn't it in alphabetical order? Either that or I'm back at the top. Uh, no. M, M, P, R, S, T, like, yeah, but there's a D here, and I'm very confused. Okay. <laughs> All right, you want to know what? I just saw Toronto. We'll choose Toronto. Uh, that's good enough here. Anyways, next. <laughs> okay, that was much harder than it should have been. Uh, definitely they need a search box or something. Okay, next. That was fine. 
And then here's a credential. This is definitely, if this is the Calamari's installer, this is a different Calamari's installer than I've ever seen. It's definitely way different. So uh, let's type in our username here and name. That's fine. N O S B M will be good. And we'll enter our password. Very strong and complicated. Interestingly, did you notice that? It actually shows the letter before it hides it. So if you're going to stream this with your actual password, don't do that because it actually shows you the, the letters. That's not secure at all. What, why bother hiding them if you're just going to show them before you hide them? Like I can understand that should be a, a toggleable a toggleable option. Okay, and we'll enter the same password which you now know because you can see the letters. Not that it was harder to guess anyways, but still. And, and here we have a scroll bar. Why we didn't have a scroll bar before? That's interesting. Okay, so next. And then, uh, now this looks familiar. So we're just going to go ahead and erase disks. It'd be, it's weird that they went through and themed everything else in the installer. And this looks like every other partition manager in Calamari's. Uh, they didn't center everything, which is kind of driving my OCD a little bit. Uh, you know, crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next and then install and then install now. Okay. So I'm going to let this install. I will cut away and come back when it's done. Okay. So as you can see, the installation failed and it had something to do with grub. And we all know that that's a fantastic place to be. So what we're going to do is say, screw you, VirtualBox. Obviously, you're a complete failure in life. And we're going to move over to Vert Manager and see if this will actually work in Vert Manager. Let's go ahead and close this. A few moments later. View full screen. I still have not learned that key binding. And interestingly enough, we're still getting errors there at the beginning. But we'll see if we can get this thing to install. My guess here is that this is not meant to be, you know, installed in a virtual machine. That they've set, they've created some settings for their installation that just doesn't work with VMs, and that's would be sad. But uh, sometimes that happens. But we're going to try one last time. It's not going to be like that last WTF video where I tried like five times. This will be the last try. Uh, if this doesn't work. We'll just go through the live environment and uh, say F it. Uh, but we're, we're going to try to install again. So I'm not going to worry about setting the language. I'm not going to go through that again. So if you go, if you get, click into one of these things, and then you, there's no, doesn't seem to be a way to go back. Also, apparently this is going to be like, oh, there's America right there. I was like, <laughs> I was looking for something different. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so we can, should be able to scroll down now to... Detroit or Chicago or New York or there we go right there there we go that wasn't as bad as experience as the last time because I kind of at least now know what I was doing I still think that there should be a search box uh, of some kind don't give me the map I don't want the map but so our search box would be nice so we're going to go ahead and enter this stuff again it doesn't matter again with uh, the strong, no longer strong and secure password. It's just a, a password because you can actually see what it is. Uh, I, I, I don't agree with that choice at all. Uh, it's <laughs> If you're setting this up in a public place, people will be able to see that. I mean, if they, they'd have to be quick, obviously, but still, it's uh, more, it's much more insecure if by showing the letters, uh, at least by default. Anyways, try again, and then next, and then install. And install now. I'm going to let this do this thing. I will cut away so you don't have to watch through the whole thing. And uh, we'll see if it works this time. Alrighty then. So this is uh, another failure. So I'm going to assume, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that this is a problem with this being installed in a virtual machine. And like I said you know, just a few minutes ago, uh, I'm uh, not going to go through and uh, uh, install this again. It's possible maybe I installed, downloaded the wrong ISO because uh, I'm seeing i386 here <laughs> and that should definitely not be what we're trying to target. I don't <laughs> think that that's right. It's weird though that if that's the case, it, install, it actually, you know, uh, boots up into a live environment. So I'm going to actually close this or not close it, just 
go out of this full screen and I'm going to go and check the ISO and see if, if perhaps I uh, downloaded the wrong one for uh, the wrong CPU architecture. It doesn't say that. It says AMD 64. Uh, that is weird. Okay. Um, anyways, what we're going to do, we're going to make lemons out of lemonade. We're going to go through and just look at the uh, live environment. We can't install it, so we'll do what we can. So first, let's go ahead and look at the file manager. This is one of their custom applications, and it is gorgeous, as you can see. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can change the display resolution. So let's go up here, hit the settings icon and go down to displays which is um, right here and we'll change the display resolution to this and apply and it doesn't stick okay so that uh, it, it, it doesn't matter because it didn't actually stay so that is definitely a uh, uh, that is definitely a failure on that part as well. Okay, so the uh, we're not going to be able to make it any bigger, so we're going to have to deal with black bars, which is uh, disappointing. Uh, Theming-wise, this is gorgeous. I wish I could install it and actually use it, uh, or you know, play around with it on a uh, an installed system, but I can't uh, for obviously. So, interestingly, these things are not in alphabetical order, which is again messing with my. Uh, OCD, but it is a very good looking file manager. It, this is written in Maui Kit, so this is one of the applications that they've created themselves on top of KDE, but through the the UI framework framework known as Maui Kit. And as you can see, it's really good looking. Now I think this is kind of like GTK, in that you can re actually it doesn't look like you can actually resize this thing at all. Okay. So if we go up here, it does. It will go to the full screen. Okay. So I was gonna say it, I thought it was like GTK, where if you um, resized it, oh, well, you can resize it from the top, but not from the corners. Okay. Uh, that is almost certainly probably a virtual machine problem. I keep blaming the virtual machine because I want to give them a benefit that this is not the case. Uh, but I thought you could do it from the sides and make it smaller, and it would be like um a responsive type design. I could be wrong about that. Um, in fact, I probably am, uh, but I just seem to remember. Anyway, so the system settings here, this is basically just the KDE system set settings uh, from the olden days. It's not one that is fully featured like the rest of the KDE, because you can see there's a lot of stuff here that's probably missing. It actually more looks like the XFCE settings manager, but if we click on this, you can see this is definitely KDE. Uh, this is this is precisely what, what the what the works the the window behavior screen looks like in uh, Plasma. So we know this is Plasma underneath by that, which is uh, comforting at least. Close this now, uh, and then so we've looked at this, and it looks pretty. Uh, does this have tabs? It does have tabs. Um, it was quite slow to open up a new tab, but it's quicker now. Uh, let's see here. D, can you do like control F to search? Yep, good. Okay, what about like a settings panel? Does it have like a settings panel? That looks like the only settings we have. We can see if this will open terminal here. Oh, here's settings. Okay, cool. Uh, so we can change the size, list item size, the save sessions. Uh, that is cool because, <laughs> all right, I've been actually looking for this feature in a, in a actual file manager, like it's broadly available for a long time, where you close it and it'll actually open back up in, a, in the same place that it left off as. There doesn't seem to be one other than this. <laughs> That's a cool feature. Other than that, there's not much here in terms of setting. And here's the thing. If you don't like single click to open, apparently you can't change that. Uh, that's an interesting choice. Um, that's going to probably make uh, some people at least a little upset. Maybe you can change it from the settings application. Uh, that sometimes happens. Okay. Um, so that's index, their file manager. So this is Nota. This is probably going to be Notes. Yep, that's going to be Notes, another Maui application. Uh, it looks like it's set up as at least some of it of an IDE so that you can go through. Hey, you have number lines at least. Uh, I'm not sure. No syntax highlighting at least unless you have the ability to. So you get oh, syntax highlighting in languages. Okay, here we go. Cool. All right. So 
We can choose a language from, oh, there's a lot of selection here. So you could choose a language and use this as an IDE if you wanted to. That's really cool. Okay, so that's Nota. Again, another Maui Kit application. Uh, we can discard that. Uh, so we got uh, regular Firefox here, system settings, and the NX Software Center. So let's go ahead and open up this and see what this is. All right, so pro tip, if you're going to have a software center, don't have it open up like that so that you can only see just one thing. Have it open up full screen. Um, again, it's possible that the problem with that is uh, uh, this is a VM in the, in the live session, so it could have a problem with that. Uh, this is not based on any software store that I've, I'm familiar with. It looks like it has a whole bunch of app images. So I believe, if I remember correctly, that Nitrix does focus a lot on app images. So if you are interested in downloading stuff, good chance that that's going to be in the form of an app image. And they do go through and feature quite a few Maui Kit applications, so that's cool. There's a station, which is the terminal application. Most of these are probably pre-installed. I'm just going to guess. Oh, maybe not. Let's go ahead and download that. Oh, yep. See, all these are going to be app images. So if you're not interested in the app image thing, Nitrix is probably not for you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and close that. That's I don't know, know anything in terms of app availability. Uh, how this would be, but it looks like it has LibreOffice, so it auto automatically beats Elementary OS. Um, it has Brave, OBS is here, Opera, uh, and that's even a proprietary uh, web browser. Uh, GIMP on Google Chromium, VS Codium, Falcon, which is another web browser. So there's quite a bit of stuff here, and again, I believe, yeah, it's going to be, all this stuff is going to be in an app image, so the selection of software looks really decent, and that's cool. Uh, by choosing app images, you're they're going to have a lot of stuff that you can install just out of the box. And it, it's in a very pretty box. Like, this is a very, very nice looking app center. And it's very well done. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of app images. I don't think that they're as well integrated as something like Flatpak. But I like them better than Snap. So, there's winning. Okay. So, let's go ahead and open up the app drawer here and see what else we have installed. So, we have Kvantum for changing... Uh, the theme, uh, Caden Live, I did start right in the middle, didn't I? I did. So you can install itch.io. We have Inkscape here by default. Arc. Now, I don't know if these things would actually be installed uh, out of the box because, again, I can't install it. We have the Ho Heroic Game Launcher. That's going to be for the Epic Game Store, I believe. Let's see here with Station, which is going to be the terminal emulator. Let's go ahead and open this up in here. Do uh, We'll zoom in. Maybe we won't zoom in. Uh, interesting. Okay, well, you know, we won't zoom in then. Fine, be that way. We'll do uname a to find ourselves the kernel. So this is using 5.14. So that's very, uh, very new. Uh, let's go ahead and do free dash m. This is going to be a very uh, hard test because we're in a live environment and things are probably running that probably wouldn't normally be uh, 838 megs uh, plus we've opened up stuff so that's probably not all that accurate uh, let's see if neofetch is installed it is not all right so neofetch there we go so we do have a custom ascii art here this is using kernel 5.14 as we saw this is uh, it has 1600 packages by default uh Interestingly enough, I don't know whether or not that's going to be counting the app images that are installed. I don't think it does. Uh, it uses ZSH out of the box, which is cool. I like ZSH by default. This is uh, using Nitrix Dark as the theme. Uh, the love icons. This is the station terminal. Uh, again, ignore that CPU architecture because uh, Vert Manager just does not report that correctly. Okay, so that is probably as much as I'm going to be able to see here. We can go back here and see if there's anything back on page one. There's not. Okay, so in terms of installed software, there's not a ton here. Uh, there's some gaming stuff. So we have things like Wine and the Hero Game Launcher. Though, interestingly enough, I don't see Steam. Do you see Steam? Uh, I don't see Steam here, so it's interesting that they chose to install Wine and the Heroic Game Launcher, but uh, things like Lutris, not here, at least as much as I can see, uh, and Steam's not installed by default, so it's interesting that they chose those two and not the more popular uh, game launchers. Maybe it's because those things are open source? That's possible. Okay, so uh, there's not much more I can do here, uh, seeing as how I can actually install, so... Uh, that is it for this. Now, 
like I said, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that their ISO is not broken. And uh, just think that this is probably a virtual machine problem. The reason why I couldn't get it installed is because I was trying it in a VM. Maybe their distro is just not meant to be used in VMs anywhere. Or maybe, uh, and this is highly possible, maybe I did something wrong. Uh, it's been very possible that I just, you know, am a dumbass and, you know, set it up improperly. So, uh, whatever the reason, chances are if you tried this on hardware, it would work fine. Uh, in terms of design, this thing is very pretty. Like, very, very pretty. Uh, it, it's... I have tried this before now that I've used this. Like it looks very, I, I had forgotten the name, but now that I've used it, it looks very familiar. And from what I remember, they have gone through and added quite a bit of functionality to some of their applications. Like before, the last time I used this, there were no settings in the index file manager. Like there was no, no settings at all. Now there are. Uh, not a lot of settings, obviously. There's not a lot that you can customize for it, but the fact that they're still making progress is commendable. And they seem to be making swift project progress because they keep coming out with updates to their operating system throughout the year. And that means more features to their custom applications, which is great. And also because it's based on Plasma, they have a very good underlying desktop environment that will allow them to use different things. Now, I don't know how much cute stuff is going to be here. Because they use app images, it's going to be a little weird that way. But I will say that it, 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 in terms of looks and feel, it's very impressive. I like it a lot. I think that it is probably early days. And that's probably why we've had, since we saw some errors in installing it. And also, there's just not a ton of settings in the applications themselves. Uh, and system settings are all confined to the KDE system settings, but not the full you know, breadth of system settings that you would be expecting on a plasma system. So that is it for this video. If you want to get in contact with me, you can do so at the Linux cast on Twitter. You can follow me at the Linux cast on Odyssey. If you're interested in viewing these videos on a platform that is not YouTube and you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linux cast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2, Fun 2, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Nevin, Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.